meeting Wednesday the 18th of August, obviously by Zoom, because <coughs> we're at level four. And we went into level four last night because of the one case in Auckland, which has now turned into five cases in Auckland. Um, Lane, could you just go on to mute, please? <coughs> and um, we'll be reassessing that on Friday, or the Prime Minister will be reassessing that on Friday and see what we um, level we move to or we stay where we are. So we all know how it works. Um, mute unless you are speaking and um, raise your hand if you want to speak. Uh, we have some guests with us today. Um, we're going to have someone from Kiwi Search for item number 14. We have the EA shareholders, councillors coming in who we appointed. And we're also going to have ACL for their report, um, which will be in committee. So welcome to the meeting and call for apologies, but we're all here. So um, no need for apologies. I'll go to item number two, which is extraordinary business. And uh, there is extraordinary business. We're going to have the the rates penalties um, and it's to recommend delaying applying the penalty for rates installment one due to COVID-19 alert level four and we can discuss that later but can I have a move in a second that we receive those Carolyn and Diane uh, include that item as extraordinary business and we'll take that after item 21. Uh, all in favour please say aye. Karen thank you. Uh, deputations, councillors, I've approved a request today from John Chapman from Inverie Station and Donald White from Mount Position Station to speak today. They'll have five minutes to speak before council considers the Inverie, Inverie Bridge replacement and the Mount Position Bridge replacement. So and I will reorder the agenda to take items 10 and 11 before item 9. So item number three of the agenda is declarations of interest. Any on today's agenda? No. Item number four, the confirmation of the minutes. Any alterations or additions on page four? And my, I'm on paper copy, so my page four hopefully is the first page of the council minutes, which is your page four. Page five. Page six, page seven, page eight, <clears throat> and page nine. Could I have a move in a second that the minutes of the 28th Council meeting be taken as read and confirmed? Liz and Diane. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Thank you. Next item is the board receipt of minutes on page 10. And we have the Methvin Community Board meeting on the 26th of July. Move in a second, we receive those minutes. Di Lynette and Roger, all in favour, please say aye. Carried. Thank you. And there's one item um, recommendation there to Council that the Meth and Community Board requests that Council staff provide a cost estimate and, pro and process for the review of the Meth and Community Strategic Plan and report back to the Board. Uh, Liz, I'll move that. Can uh, I... Any second, Diane? Any further discussion or any discussion? If not, I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Angus, you had your hand up, is it? You'll have to push your task bar. In other words, who's going to be paying for that? Is it coming out of the board allocation or council? Um, who's there could answer that? I could ask Steve if he has a view on that. Um, Steve Fabish, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> Steve? Uh, good morning, or good afternoon, uh, Mayor Neil. Yeah, just to give an update on that, I'm taking a report back to them at their next meeting and uh, the discussions around 
who will pay for it is is really um, it's it's hinged around the community board paying for this report to be done. Oh. I'm not in favour of the motion. Can it be recorded, please? Okay, you voted against. Yep. Recorded, you voted against the motion, but it has been passed. Yep. Have I, I have put the motion, haven't I? I did. Yep. Yep. Uh, next item, number six, the Road Safety Coordinating Committee, 3rd of August. Move in a second that we receive these minutes. Uh, Caroline and Diane. All those in favour, please say aye. Against, against, carried. Thank you. Item number seven is the Biodiversity Advisory Group. Move in a second that we receive these minutes. Lynette moved. And Lane second. All in favour, we receive these minutes. Please say aye. Against, carried. Item number eight is the Youth Council. Move in a second, we receive these minutes. Diane and Lane. All those in favour, please say aye. Carried. Reports. We'll move now to the report number, item number 10 which is the replacement of bridge to Inver Inverary Station. And we have John Chapman. John, you've got five minutes to talk to us about your bridge. Neil, I'm afraid John Chapman hasn't joined yet, but Donald White is here on the call. Okay, so we might move to item number 11, and we can take um, Donald White. Donald, welcome. You have five minutes, or up to five minutes, to talk to us about um, the Mount Position Bridge. Welcome, Don. He has been yeah. unmuted, so hoping he can... Yeah, Donald, are you there and can hear us? Don't appear to be coming in... <clears throat> Um, Mr. Mayor, I wonder if Ashton, can we uh, get his video going as well through the host? Yes, I don't think Donald has a video. Okay. Okay, we don't, uh, hang on, something might be happening there now. Are you there, Donald? No, it doesn't appear to be. Shall we go back to item number nine? We'll start with on the agenda and the replacement of bridge to Surrey Hills. Should we do that one first and see whether they um, give them a few minutes to try and sort out some technical issues, if there is any. <clears throat> Donald, can you hear us there now or not? No. So item number nine, replacement of um, bridge to Surrey Hills. And Tony Durham, here we go, Tony, welcome. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, Anything the, further sorry, to add? Nothing further to add. I think um, the the report is pretty self-explanatory. But happy to answer any questions if there are any. Questions, councillors. Uh, Lynette, is that a question, Lynette? <coughs> I was just going to ask, these bridges, will they be built to a better stand and, and a bit higher above the, the base of the river so they can't be taken out easily again in the future? Are we sort of make it, building them a bit better than what we're replacing? Thank you. Through the Chair, um, yes, the intention is with the bridges to be built to withstand a greater flood level than what they were. <laughs> I mean, some of these bridges are 50, 60, 70 years old, so... Um, there's certainly an eye to improving um, the standard of the bridges uh, and, and definitely in Surrey Hills. <coughs> yeah, 
any questions, John? Yeah, I don't have any problem with this one. I guess part of the reason for us putting money into it is that we cannot give ownership of a bridge to a third party without the bridge actually being fit for purpose. That would then be called a fit for purpose bridge, wouldn't it? Yeah. Mm. Not fit for purpose at the mm. moment. Just a question I have, uh, Diane. Thank you. Um, yeah, I agree with what's written for these bridges, but I think the key thing is that we do complete the paperwork at the end of it when we hand <laughs> over the ownership. As you can see in the past, that hasn't ever been done. Yeah, the, the other two recommendations we look at, Tony, has that in them, that um, the monies aren't paid until the transfer is um, completed. Uh, this one doesn't have that in. Can we add that? So this one is a little bit different because we actually own the bridge and it's listed on our asset register from the start. So we would be making sure we would be um, covering all the costs of the commissioning and the tendering and the actual completion of the bridge. The other two reports are slightly different and I can explain those when we get there. Um, so this one will be a matter of us making sure that we invoice um, the Surrey Hill property owners and get that payment in. Um, and I wonder if it's worth adding in that we The transfer and the ownership is pending on, oh, this one is different to the other two. Um, I could add a recommendation and let me just think about how that would be worded. Okay. Just think about that when you've got a question from Stuart. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Did we have any insurance on that bridge? I might have to go to Neil McCann for that one, sorry. Neil, or is it a poor question, one or yeah. the other? Yeah, um, I can answer that. Um, yeah, it is It is on our asset register, um, so therefore would be included in our insurance. Supplementary question, Stuart? Yes. Have we claimed on it, then? It doesn't, just reading that report doesn't look as if we've made any claim at all. I don't believe we have at this stage. So obviously that'll be investigated. Yes, I'll, we'll, we'll certainly look into that and see. <clears throat> Trouble is, how can we pass a motion as written if we're going to uh, claim insurance? It'll make the figures completely different, won't it? I think the, 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 it would only be, our, our insurance would be to replace it like for like. So the council contribution of um, uh, of up to 175,000. If we can get an insurance claim to cover our portion of that, that would be that's great, and that will save having to affect the rest of the budget. But it's the it's the additional improvement to the bridge, which is the, where we're looking to split the cost of 52,500 with the Surrey Hill property owners. Um, that that wouldn't be covered covered by an insurance claim, I wouldn't imagine. Yep, Caroline. I think that's important to know that, Tony. And, and my question is regarding um, the use of it. I, can you hear me all right? Yes, we're good. I notice um, in some of the other reports, and I may well have missed it in this one, that the, there's very few people that don't have work involved with the stations that are using these bridges. If we transfer ownership, and it may not be relevant to this bridge, I'm not entirely sure who else goes up Surrey Hills Road, but if we transfer ownership, does that retain public use of the bridge? Uh, Neil or Tony? I, I can speak to the example with um, at Inverary Station. So um, right now the bridge is, uh, it's it's not part of our asset register, it's not a formal part of our roading network as such, um, but public are allowed access by uh, um, approval from the property owner. And that seems to be a fairly common practice amongst station owners with these types of access ways. May I ask a supplementary question, Mr. Mayor? Yes. How do we know? Does anybody else access Surrey Hills um, Road except for Surrey Hills Station? Like, who else uses that bridge? Is it used infrequently by the public or at all? Or? 
it is used relatively infrequently by the public and if the public are looking to go beyond that bridge you're on the Surrey Hills station property then so that would be at the discretion of the landowner. That would be a consent thing regardless okay thank you. Yep. Just look if we loan fund this um, Tony and we fund against the roading activity have you thought about the length of loan term? At this stage, we would just be proposing that it would be our standard uh, length of loan term, which would be the 20 years um, for a roading asset. Uh, however, if council was of a mind to make that shorter, then, then that would be at your direction to us. I think 20 years is way too long for this, for something that we're um, we're writing off, so to speak, and this will come up in the next two as well. Um, three or four years, I thought, would be a better um term of the loan to to have but um welcome to get councillors feedback caroline you'll have to unmute yourself beg your pardon say there's another disaster or another flooding event in the next 12 months and we've loan funded a, a bridge for 20 years that loan is still outstanding to us even though we've transferred the bridge to the station owners is if i understood that correctly Yes, that's correct. Yep. Is there any comment on that with regards to council and ratepayers' liability there? Or? Well, the only liability is to the is to the loan, so we have to keep repaying that until it's repaid. But on the assumption that the paperwork follows the um, council's decisions today, then we'll have no ongoing liability for the bridge, but we'll have liability for our um, whatever debt we raise to do the capital works. May I ask one more question, Neil, yes. please? Yeah. So we'll have insurance over that bridge. Will we have insurance with our loan or will the station owner get insurance? Well, that'll, that'll be up to the station owner, councillor. Well, once it's there, once it's um, this transaction is complete, it, it's it's their property and they'll insure it or not at their own <coughs> discretion. We, we just, we're just yeah. then dealing with the debt. Yeah, okay, thanks. John? Oh, thank you. Um, I would have thought five-year loan term would have been sufficient over whatever uh, loans we approve for these three bridges. Yeah, I think we're only loan funding to smooth it out. We haven't got the funds in the day-to-day um, -day running to, to do it. So um, a shorter-term loan would be better than longer-term, I think. So, Tony, can we, um, or councillors, can we can add in... Um, be loan funded up to five years and we'll work out the term later. Uh, Angus? Push your mute, Angus. We can't hear you, Angus. Angus, you have to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry. Um, could, the words could go after loan funded, brackets, for five years, close brackets, against the roading activity. How would that be? And if that's the case, I'll move it. Okay, we'll move that with that addition. And Lynette seconded. <coughs> Open for debate. Um, Angus, you want to speak to the motion? Yes, um, Mr Mayor and Councillors, um, roads and bridges on the very fringe of our district um, if we can hand them to private enterprise that gets rid of the council and people's liability forever. And this is an opportunity that I believe we should take. There'll be insurance, and I'm, I'll leave that to uh, Mr McCann and Paul to sort out, but surely the insurance we the insurance is to us, so therefore it'll come out of our portion, will it not? So on that basis, I'm more than willing to move the motion. Thank you. Uh, Lynette, you did have your hand up. Have you? Or oh, no, someone else did that went away. Come back to you if need be. Stuart. Is, is it going to cost us 140000 is it? Half of 175 and then 52. So that means we'll be paying about 28000 a year capital plus interest. Right. If I understand it correctly, it's 52000 as their total cost, which will be loan funded over five years. So, uh, sorry, through the chair, just to clarify, there's two aspects to this. 
So there is the, um, the, the replacement cost of 175,000, which will be split between us and Waka Katahi. We're still working through what um, subsidy Waka Katahi will give us. It's between 51, potentially up to 71%, although I did hear a figure of up to 80%. Um, there we, so we'll, we'll meet the balance. Um, and then we'll, there will also be the 52,500 on top of it. Uh, John? Yeah, getting the money from NZTA, are they going to be happy to give us money for a bridge that we're then going to give to the landowner? Yep. Yep, these assets are subsidised as, as our um, assets. So in this case, uh, the subsidy is applicable. It's just the rate that we've got to agree. I'll put the motion if there's uh, no more speakers. Or did you want to write a reply, Angus? No. I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All those in favour. Please say aye. Against. Carried. Thank you. Um, we'll move over to Donald White now. I think, Donald, can you hear us, please, if you, if you can come in? Yes, I can hear you, Neil. Oh, good, Donald. So we're up to item number 11 now, which is the replacement of bridge to mount position. Um, and we've allowed you five minutes to talk to councillors, or up to five minutes, just to um, brief us on the bridge. If you'd like to go now, that would be great. Thanks. All right. Thanks very much. And, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Sorry, technology didn't link me earlier, but that's probably my generational thing. Um, our family has owned mount position stations since 1980. And we're now the third, we now have a third generation here. We're a hill and high country breeding property running sheep, cattle, and deer. The situation around ownership of Bridge 78 and its deterioration has caused concern and angst for some years and was unresolved in 2005 and again in 2012. Now, nature has sorted the old bridge situation but not the surrounding responsibility and the access issues and confusion. Cavill Leach Law investigated and reported to the council in 2012. They noted at three points in their presentation that the bridge was owned by ADC and also that legal road access to both Edendale Station and Mount Possession was unclear and that the council might have an obligation to resolve this as it was the principal governance of the roading network of the district. And this roading is a community asset as funded by rates and road user charges. The council has maintained the road in both bridge 78 and then bridge 79 to the Mount Possession and Edendale boundary for 80 years until 2012. I would like to clarify one of Tony Durham's notes regarding insurance on Bridge 78. We took some insurance cover on the bridge, not for a replacement value, but as a safety move to help should we have to repair the bridge uh, at any time. This doesn't imply or didn't imply ownership, just ensuring a valuable access to our business. I have estimated that in the last 12 months, we could have had up to 200 truck trips bringing in farm supplies and taking out produce from these two properties, which is a lot of value linked to the district, the country, and requires a bridge to continue. I appreciate the consideration that the council and its executives is giving to support this initiative and as a positive move forward from the historical past to a new age position. That's, that's all I need to say at this stage, um, and I'd welcome any questions to clarify uh, further, Neil. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Donald, for that for that great update. Councillors, any questions of Donald? I'll just kick off with one. If the bridge is transferred to um, yourselves, um, and the road will still be a public road, or would they need, or the or if the public want to go up there, will they need permission from yourselves to use the road and bridge? Well, I guess they would they would need permission from us to 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 use that option but common sense would prevail there i mean we've, we've we don't have a, a public road as such there straightforward up until now and and it's never unless there is a problem caused a problem i suppose it's a supplementary question there is how far after the bridge 
is the public road for? Um, well, that's one of the, the confusing issues here. From the gorge road to the bridge, there is no public road. From the bridge to our boundary, there is no public road for 50 metres, and then it becomes a public road, crosses another small bridge, and then approaches the boundary. So there's still some... Uh, yeah, some issues that are really quite strange, given the historical long-term nature of the bridge and the and the access to both these properties. So, looking at their recommendation we have, which you will have seen, that will sort all those issues out if we approve that today. Uh, yeah, pretty much, excepting that the access from the gorge road to the bridge is actually over private land owned by Castle Ridge Station they have given me the undertaking that they will extend to us the opportunity to uh, legally form an easement on that road or, or for that road from the gorge road to the bridge All right okay so there's got a couple of questions here stuart yes um my question is what proportion of the replacement will your insurance sorry i missed that bit stuart how big a proportion of the total cost will your insurance cover? Our insurance cover will be 200000 uh, John. Thank you. Um, the Cavill Leach report, should that have been given to councillors as part of the background to making a decision here? Is that probably a question for staff, I think, Tony? Yeah, it is. Uh, John, which would be Tony. Um, we can hold that question once we've um, finished asking questions of Donald, if you like. Okay. Yeah. Any further questions for Donald? No, well, can, I, can, I, can I have one yeah. more short comment, Neil? Yes. Um, I have, I have undertaken to go ahead and consult with three different uh, contractors to, to replace this bridge. And my question to them was to provide a 100-year bridge, um, meaning that we needed, obviously, to move forward and have get past the risk or... Um, make the risk as little as possible from a similar flood event. The bridge we are, we are have now decided to go with in one option um, really is exactly the same length as the other one, but it will have a 25 metre clear span in the centre, allowing for more trash and um, water to travel through. And I've asked them to make it approximately within the design, it'll be 800 higher than the height of the floodwaters back in May. So that is uh, within the parameters of what was there. Very, very similar bridge, just with those um, hopefully longer term op uh, options to keep it uh, where it belongs. Yeah, it's just one further question. So when, if the bridge is handed over, the road will be maintained by yourselves as well, back Correct. to yeah. back yes. to which which intersection? Back to the Gorge Road. Right. Thank you. Councillors, any further questions of Donald? If not, we might go questions to staff now. And John, you had one. Thank you. Yeah, the question I have is the Cavill Leach report that was done, uh, is that relevant to the discussions? Because I am very uneasy about giving money for a bridge to be built which is supposedly owned privately and so what i'm looking for is if there is a council responsibility then it comes back to what i says, said before we've got to hand over a fit, fit for purpose bridge or help to fund it so as i say to me, if it's entirely privately owned, then it's not our responsibility. But if it is, then yes, we do have a responsibility. Um, oh, oh, Tony, you go. No, you go, Tony, you go. Um, sorry, thank you through the chair. Uh, 
I think I was um, possibly we should have included that Campbell Leach uh, paper into this in hindsight. Um, I guess we were taking coming from the position of um, the report back in 2012, which highlighted the, the confusion that existed and, and the progress and the attempts that were made to try and get that bridge handed over. It, the bridge isn't sitting as a part of council's asset register as a part of the roading network right now. Um, so it's almost left in this bit of a no man's land, hence why we need to try and get a resolution sorted. But the Kevil Leach report wouldn't have changed. It, that's, it was saying that the council owns the bridge. It, it was saying that there may be some responsibility. So, so th th this is this is confusing in the sense that uh, it's not on our asset register. Uh, our roading team don't think it's a council bridge. However, um, it's it's not um, particularly clear because the deed of agreement uh, was never completed, and so the uncertainty that you can see in this report. Uh, was reflected in that uh, that that um, legal legal view, so, so the legal view would have simply reflected the same degree of uh, uncertainty that we tried to portray in this report. Yep, John. Rather than making a decision today, should we not just let this lie on the table for a fortnight until councillors have seen a copy of that Cavill Leach report? Um, I think the whoever owns the bridge, the user of the bridge would like to get on and get it fixed, I think, and get some surety and moving forward. But um, happy to take council's advice. Is there a will to lie on the table? I, only from Lynette. Don't think there's no will. They would like to tidy it up today. Caroline? Yes, I'd like to see the report and I'd like to leave it on the table for a couple of weeks. That would be my thinking. Just to, get, some, just to get some clarity. Um, Mr Mayor and Councillors, this is um, a messy situation. We have an opportunity right now to get out of this messy, uh, messy situation without having to pay a full bridge. Um, there's insurance on the table. There's an offer from a landowner, a private entity enterprise to build, we get out of it probably what would be the same cost as a court case if it had to go to court to sort it. Um, I suggest we take this great opportunity and get on and do it. Stuart, do you want to let it lie on the table or not? No, I'd rather get on with it. I agree with Anne. Get on with it. Uh, Lynette? Lynette? I, I, I actually agree with Angus on this. That's why I was waving my hand at you before. Um, the public do use this bridge, and I think we have got goodwill to let get on and get this br uh, bridge done. Because I keep going back to the Berryman's Bridge <laughs> in the North Island when the Honeyman fell through it. Um, you know, and you think of all the contractors and that going up to these these stations. I think we do have a bit of responsibility to help them build these bridges for the future. We, we're getting into debate mode now, so I think we'll start the debate. Someone like to move. I don't think there's a will there to let it lie on the table. Some would like to move that we, um, the recommendation in there, and it'll also have the loan term of up to five years included in it. So um, you have got a few hands up there. Diane, you would like to move? And Lane? Yeah, I'm happy to move, and I support what um, the others have said about let's get on and, and get cracking and get it sorted. Yeah. Lane, you want a second? You'll have to unmute. Yes, I will second. Yep. Okay, open for debate. There is no debate. And we do have the words for the loan up to five years added in to the um, recommendation that's in front of you. I'll put the motion then. I'm in favour. All in favour, please say aye. Against. Carried. Thank you. And thank you, Donald, for um, your contribution. I think we might have a good result there. Hope you'll be happy with that. Thank you very much, everybody. Yep. Uh, you can stay on for as long or as short as you wish from there on. That'll be good. And I think we have um, John Chapman on now. So we'll go to item number 10, which is the replacement of the bridge to Inverary, Inverary Station. John, do we have you there?
No. Ashling, did we think we had him? Yes, I can see that he's joined, so he might be having difficulty with sound. Okay. John, are you able to hear us? I see you're unmuted. If you can hear us, if you could talk, that would be great. Doesn't look as though he is um, able to hear us, but we will have to progress this. Um, item number 10, replacement of, rid of the bridge to Inverary Station. Councillors, any questions or stuff similar to the last bridge? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Once more, is there insurance? Anybody got insurance on that bridge? Ish, uh, sorry, through the chair, Ashburton District Council doesn't have insurance for this bridge. It's not deemed part of our roading network. Roger. Roger. You have to unmute yourself, Roger. Roger, push your space bar. There you go. Um, just wanted to say that if, uh, if it's going to be loan funded, we should add the same words as we did in the previous recommendation for up to five years. Correct. Yep. Um, any further questions, councillors? Liz. If there's no questions, I'll move the recommendation with the five years added in. And John, are you seconding? Moved and seconded Liz and seconded John. Um, over for debate, Stuart. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. I'd still like to know if there was insurance on it. I mean... Uh, would have to well, the, the owner would virtually pay nothing if, if there was insurance. Yeah, well, wait, John is there. John, can you hear us at all? The line that heads into the gorge must not be that um, great. Liz, you've got your hand up. Yeah, I, I recall a conversation <coughs> with John. I've had quite a few chats with him about this bridge, and I I'm pretty certain that it was not insured. Yeah, Hamish? Um, we could, um, Mr Mayor, Council could consider amending the recommendation uh, to to be two-thirds uh, of, of any net amount uh, of the bridge. So if there was private insurance, uh, that would come off first and we'd pay two-thirds of the difference. And if there is no insurance, uh, then we'd pay two-thirds of the the total costs and that would give effect to the two thirds, but also take into account Councillor Wilson's um, query, which we just can't answer right here. Okay, would the mover and the seconder be happy if we added that in? The mover's happy with that, and the second is John. Where's John? The happy John. Yep. Carolyn, you've got your light on. Uh, sorry, I was just going to say that I'm happy with that as well, but I, I didn't turn my hand up. Hold on. Right. Okay, so we've got that addition in there. John, I think you're, I thought we could just come in there for a second. John Chapman, I mean. No, it's not. So with those additions, any further debate? Don't need a right of reply, Liz. I'll put the motion, Diane, you've got your hand up. It's just on the screen, I can see John Chapman's picture and he's trying to talk to us okay i can see just john and um no picture at all and no voice at all um should we try no yeah i can i can see Neil john told enough a piece of paper saying not insured not insured right great <laughs> thanks obviously john you can hear us we can see you now but you can't we can't hear you yep okay 
so um, not insured. Thanks for that. Um, that's good. So um, I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All those in favour, please say aye. Against. Carried. Yep, yeah, carried. Thank you. That's great. Donald and John, you can stay on if you wish and listen to the rest of our, um, our meeting. So let me just um, catch up. <clears throat> Item number 12, Lake Clearwater Hut Settlement. Diane, your hand's still up, is it? Carolyn, your hand is up. Um, I've just got a, a remark to make, if I may. Uh, do, will we be undertaking a good stock take then of district assets as a result of these things not being on the books and otherwise? Uh, Hamish? Uh, Pat, Neil McCann would perhaps be in the best okay. um, place to, to, to answer um that, that around things uh, other than these three, which are now presumably sort of subject to the paperwork. Yeah, yes. thank you, Neil. Yeah, through the mayor. Um, when when we did discuss these and these became um, we became aware of these, uh, we we started asking if there are many others uh, that that were in a similar situation. Uh, we don't believe there are, but uh, however, we'll certainly go through our register and and see if there are any. But uh, as far as we know, um, we don't. There aren't any that we know of but we'll certainly um tidy up and see if we can see if there are any other loose ends how can how can the councillors get an insurance that that's been um tidied up uh what what we could do is i could uh i could do a report um i could report back in an activity briefing as to um our network and um just looking at our network and bridges and just confirming where, where we are with them and if there are any potential uh, irregularities like these or things in the past, we can we can do our best to see if there is anything like that. Okay, uh, that sounds, sounds a good idea. Yeah. Caroline? Yeah, thanks, Neil. That would be a good idea because we didn't plan for this in the long-term plan, so, you know, it's a good idea to know what's out there and get some insurance. That's why it is loan-funded, yeah, <clears throat> but over short term. Uh, item number 12, Lake Clearwater Huts. Uh, Ian, is this is your um, one, I think. Ian Hyde and Jane. I think it's a, a, a group effort. This one, right? Uh, any anything further to add to your report, Ian? Uh, not, not from me. No, Mr. Mayor. Okay, councillors. Any questions, uh, Angus? Yeah, you have to unmute yourself. No questions. It's all on the report. It'd be great to hear what the actual community up there and in the district and in wider New Zealand wants. And this is the opportunity. Let's get on with it and do it. Let's and deal with the results. Let's take questions first and then we'll come back to you, Angus. John. Yeah, I know. I, I did an add up of all the colours. And basically, we've got 63 long drops, which is about a one third of the huts. We've also got 30 with long drops and holding tanks. Does that mean they've got two outlets, one in a long drop and one up with a holding tank, or are the two connected? Um, yeah, through the chair, uh, my understanding is that there's a number of batches that have been previously or recently um, improved or rebuilt, and the new standards are that they are required to have a holding tank. Um, however, some batches have not removed their pre-existing um, long drop toilet so effectively they have they have two I think the usually the long drop is, is very much kept as a backup and, and, and no longer used but um, regardless of that at the moment they they, they they have both how would you remove a long drop toilet fill it in I believe the no oh, sorry through through the chair I believe that the um, the uh, the way of doing it is effectively to just um, fill it up with yeah with with soil and rocks and um, up to I think just at ground level really. Okay, yeah. Caroline, you'll have to unmute yourself. Can't hear you. Push your temper. Yeah, I did, but I've anyway I've unmuted myself properly now. With regards to flipping. Is that imminent risk of flipping? Presumably that means too much nitrogen and you get more weeds and doesn't have any fish in it. Is, 
Is that right? what is a measurement for that? Is there a sort of a scientific measurement like oxygen concentration or and how long does the flipping process take? Like a week, a month, a year, or what's sort of the deal with it, please? Um, through the chair, I'm I'm no scientist, but um, my understanding is effectively it's that the lake gets to a situation where it can't easily recover itself and it can't return to basically the status quo. Um, effectively, the, the the environmental conditions um, change. Uh, Jane may be able to explain a little bit more eloquently than I can. Jane, I'm trying. To, I'm trying to unmute. Can you hear me? It's worked. Yeah. Oh, thanks for that. Um, yeah. What the scientists did say in answer to a question at the last who he held in Methan was that if we had a summer another summer this year like we had last year, the lake could flip this summer. So these things can happen fairly quickly and it can take many, many years to, for them to recover. And that even when you get your levels um, of nitrogen and what have you down, it'll, it can still take like 30 years to try and get rid of them and get back to where you were Yeah, Carol, I think you used the word nitrogen. I think the word uh, nutrient is probably a better word to use. Thank you. I'm just reading in the summary. It says nitrate, so I did use nitrogen. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nitrates come from uh, yeah. Gorse and Madagari yeah. as well. Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. I, ha I have another question, which I... Okay, go for uh, it. Um, the, the surrounding land, is that... Uh, that's dock land, isn't it? Surrounding Lake Clearwater and Lake Camp, isn't it? Is that right? Yeah. I believe, through the chair, I believe predominantly it is dock, and I think there is some private land around it as well. Thank you. Lane? Yes, just a question. Um, the public consultation, is it district-wide or nationwide, or how wide has this come to be? Ian? Yeah, through the chair. I think that's yet to be yet to be determined. But um, public consultation generally generally raises it out to the community, and I guess there's no real. I don't know. Tony might be able to explain this a little bit better to me, but uh, than than me. But um, there's really no level of of consultation. So if we would go out to the paper, I guess it's open to anybody to to to, to respond if they saw fit. But generally, we're tailoring it tailoring it ideally to <coughs> the to the rest of the district. Tony? Thank you. Through the chair, yeah, look, just to support what Ian's saying, if we're undertaking public engagement and consultation, we're we'll talking to as many in the community as possible. Um, I think it's it's probably a pretty special place to a lot of a lot of people within our district and potentially outside of the district as well. So we'll make sure that we, we capture all the views. Thank you. Good. Diane? Thank you. Just a question. Oh, I thought the report was good. I learned a few things. Um, with the, the ones who don't have their holding tanks, um, where does the, I mean, they've got their sewerage, obviously, and their long drop, but where does the dish and shower water end up? Same place. Ian? So once they've got a tank in, one would assume that all of their wastewater is going in it. Jane? Um, I'll answer that because Ian's gone all silent. <laughs> I, I think some of it goes into holding tanks, but most of it goes into the ground and into soak pits. Thank you. That's as it is now, but um, that may change in the future. Uh, Lane, you, you've got your light on again. You're right. Lynette? I was just going to ask in the consultation, you know, in the original deed plan, there was it was for the people of the Ashburton district for the um, the huts up there, and we have got outsiders wanting to come in. Will that be addressed in the consultation? And we've also got twelve sections up there. Um, how we're going to deal with those in the, in the future? Because they did talk about um, selling some of those. Just like your feedback on that, please. Jane? Um, I think that there are a number of 
uh, hut holders who do not live in the Ashburton district. Uh, they live in Christchurch, um, Timaru, all over the place. You can't just boot them out because they're not Ashburton people now. They've got legitimate leases and have a lawful right to to stay there. So I don't think it's a case where you can turn the clock back now and say this is only going to be for the people of the district. So I think our consultation would have to include the hut holders, obviously, um, many of whom are not from the district, as well as people from the district. And indeed, if there are others in Canterbury who go up to those lakes a lot and enjoy them, but might not necessarily stay there, all of those people um, I think we should be listening to. Um, the other part of your question, I'm just trying to remember what it was. Sorry, the 12 sections, we had oh. we had some discussions about them last term of council. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I know that Colin um, would like to revisit that, Colin Windlebourne at some point, uh, but I don't know what his plans are for when he wants to do that. Okay, Chuck. A question for me, Jane. The um, when the titles were done, early on there was dis uh, dispute over whether the boundaries were the title boundaries and the houses built over the top of them. The titles that the survey that's been done, are they where they should be, or do they still need to be sorted out? Um, there are some that do need to be sorted out, but it's nowhere near as bad as what we first thought it was. And Colin is working on a plan for how to do that. Um, and he'll be doing that in consultation with those particular hut holders. That'll be a separate consultation to this report, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Roger. Uh, thank you, uh, Neil. I, I would like to know, before we go into consultation, just who the neighbours are. Who does own the land around there? We don't seem to know. We know some of it's dock. We're not sure whether some of it's private. Uh, just before we go into consultation, I think we should just clarify who we may have to deal with. Jane? Yeah, yes, we can, we can do that. I know there are four um, stations up there. Um, who've certainly been involved in the, all the discussions with the Ashburton Lakes Working Group. Um, and there's DOC, and there's Linz, and there's Ashburton District Council. Thank you. Yeah, there, there is a plan out there. I know the Zone Committee looked at it some time ago, and um, it was on their plan, it was stated who owned what around it. So there is there is a plan there with the ownership on it. Uh, Lane? <clears throat> it's just no more questions, so I'm quite happy to most. Uh, well, to another question from Stuart. Thanks, thanks, Neil. As far as I know, the majority is Doc. The round Clearwater um, Doc took it all over, and the landowners are more out Mary Lakes way. Yeah, Angus. Uh, quite happy to second uh, Councillor Brahms' motion. Yeah, uh, and no, more, no further questions. If not, we've got Lane Brum, who has moved, and Angus Mackay, who has seconded. Now open for debate. Um, Angus. Um, Mr Mayor, councillors, quite simply, if you go to the report and the summary, the second dot point, there are some key words there, in my opinion. Um, Lake Clearwater has been identified at risk of flipping which is becoming incapable of sustaining life, um, as, as it has been historically. Um, that's pretty dangerous, councillors. Um, it means the next type of lake we could have there is a very dead lake, and I'm surprised that the Zone Committee hasn't already done something about it. And our, also our council staff have done an awful lot of work there tidying up other bits and pieces. And they obviously believe that the time is right for consultation and they have their, all their so-called ducks in a row. And I think we should go and do it very quickly and get on and work out exactly what the community there 
and the rest of New Zealand may want to do with this piece of prime real estate for the good of the country. Please vote in favour. Thank you. Uh, Liz. Thank you. Um, and I'm the same. Um, I attended the um, meeting up there, um, I think it was on the 2nd of January this year, and there was a large group of um, the hut holders who are all very passionate about that area. They um, they kind of tend to be in groups of fishermen, windsurfers, bikers, um, and sort of general people who just love the area. So um, they they want to see that um, the lake getting back to normal, um, and they want to do as much as they can to to make it a great place. Um, and so I think this is, is a really good idea, and it's really timely as well. Yeah, I'm sure they will play a part in um, restoring as well. Yeah, Stuart. Thanks, Mr Mayor. In defence of the Zone Committee, we've been liaising with the Arafanua and Aitahu landowners, and the Zone Committee, remember, have no legislative power. We can only rely on ECAN and the District Council, <coughs> who um, have actually got the power to do something. Thank you. No more speakers to the motion. Lane, did you want to write a reply? No. I'll put the motion. Yes, I'll put it. Oh, you will. No, I'll put it. I'll put it. <laughs> if I can. Um, it has all been set before, and it's a special place. I came here in 1982, and the first place I ever was shown was that area. So 40 years later, I think we certainly have to start looking after it. It's really precious. I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All in favour, please say aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. Next item, number 13, sensitive expenditure policy. And this came back um, from uh, probably the couple of council meetings ago where we weren't meeting the um, requirements. So this looks like it's a lot better than what it was. Mel, this is your report. Um, any further, anything further to add? Through the chair, nothing further to add. Thank you. Thank you. Um, councillors, any questions of Mel? John. John, unmute. There be no questions. I would uh, move the recommendation. Liz, did you have a question? No, I was going to second. Okay, John moved. Liz, second. Open for debate. John, do you want to speak to it? Um, yeah, I think we cannot restrict or constrict what we spend. I mean, basically, we have to spend what we need to spend. But the overriding part of the policy is that we will look to take the cheap cheapest option where we can. And to me, that is the important part of it, not so much an upper um, spend limit. So that's why I support the uh, motion. Yeah, and I agree with you. The cheapest option might be um, 20 miles away and you'll top it up, if not more, with a taxi ride to where you need to be, not counting time, etc. So it needs to be practical as well. And I think the policy now is, um, is fit for purpose and practical. So uh, hence I'm supporting it. Any further speakers for or against, councillors? <coughs> <clears throat> Jay, oh no. Uh, if not, I'll put the motion. All in favour, please say aye. Against. Carried. Thank you. Uh, item number 14. And we have with us uh, Mike, Mike Hooker, who is the, uh, the annual resident survey. So um, is Mike with us? He's due to join at around 2.30, but I can... Oh, okay, hang on. Oh, well, no, that's fine. We might park that then. Sure. Um, we can't really. Uh, what about the EA Networks people? Have we got them on with us? 
Not yet. I'll see if I can get Michael Hocker on now in the next minute. Okay, see if, see if we can. If not, we're, we're getting to the end of um, open meeting, so um, we'll just wait a few seconds, councillors, or minutes, and just see if we can get Mike on there. Um, List Mayor, you could carry on with items 15, 16. Oh, sorry, of course. Meeting section. Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, yep, yeah. no, I've... Um, yeah, just reading your report there now, we can. Let's move on to item 15, page 70. The end of year performance report. Uh, Emily, this is your report. Richard, do we have either? Emily, there we go. Anything further to add to the report, Emily? Uh, thanks through the chair, no. Um, nothing further to add. Okay, so we might, um, councillors, questions? Stuart. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. On my transportation, page 78, volume of metal replaced on unsealed roads. Instead of 48,000, we're only 41,600. This is what we did a few years ago. Didn't put the required amount on, and our unsealed metal roads fell to pieces. We had, we had a catch up there for a year or two, and I think it's imperative that we put on the amount that we budget for. Yep, agree. Angus? Um, my question, actually, not to staff, but to councillors, is why do we still have that we're aiming to promote the productivity of rural land in Stockwater? This is Stockwater on page 77. Promote the productivity of rural land and efficient use of clean, reliable stock water. And yet all the measures are about abatement notice, infringement notices, and enforcement notices and convictions. Um, can this, if we are going to continue to have stock water, can we please work on this so we actually um, measure what we're aiming for or change what we're aiming for? Maybe we should really be aiming for um, no abatement notices, no infringement notices, no enforcement notices and no convictions. But we've got two separate things there we're aiming for and they're not compatible. So can we either fix them up for next year uh, do away with one, alter one, or whatever, so it's actually can be measured. Because in my mind, abatement notices, infringement notices, enforcement notices have got nothing to do whatsoever with the efficient provision of clean, reliable stock water. Do we not do this in the long term plan? Yeah, thanks through the chair. So, through the long term plan, we have actually rolled over the same um, again. So, you'd have to wait another three years to change it if you wish. On page 75 of the wastewater performance, I mentioned before our long-term plan was done that we wanted to report on minor non-compliances. So that must be happening somewhere. Uh, through the chair, um, this is pulling from the 2018 to 28 long-term plan because it's for the end of year three of their LTP. Um, in the new LTP, however, we did discuss including those minor um, breaches, I think that's the word, um, but it was agreed by council that those would come to you through the activity briefing rather than being um, a performance measure as a part of the LTP. Okay, so we'll need to... Um put them in activity briefings because we haven't seen any yet. Not non-compliances, but a report, reporting the non-compliances, if there is any. Yeah. Have that in the next one, great. <clears throat> Councillors, any further questions? Just have one on um, page one, drinking water, and we don't achieve um, protozoa compliance um, in the deep wells. The question is, can we ever get Protozoa, protozoa compliance on the deep wells. 
Uh, my understanding is yes, we can, uh, but Andy might like, or Neil might like to um, advise how. Yeah, Andy, Andy's online. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good afternoon, councillors. Um, yeah, the answer is we can uh, get compliance, but um, the way we're intending to do it now, because um, because of the difficulties around secure groundwater and the view that secure groundwater is a as a thing is going to disappear in the new um, legislation. Um, the way we've done it in the LTP is to allow for the introduction of UV um, treatment in those plants. Um, and you'll see that they're in years, in the later years of the LTP, or the, the, the later three, uh, year two and three and four, I believe. Is it a matter of putting a filter on or is it that simple or is it more difficult than that? Uh, no, so the, the because the water is still of very high quality from it's coming from deep groundwater source, um, the only additional treatment we require is UV, and that will address the protozoa risk on those supplies. And what are the chances of a deep well having protozoa in it? Oh, well, I'm, I'm not a water scientist by any stretch. Um, we did do some protozoa testing uh, once um, for a, a, a period that was uh, requested by the previous chief executive. Um, they're quite an expensive test and takes 20 litres of water um, per sample, um, and we didn't find any, and that was on the Ashburton scheme. Yeah. Caroline? Thank you. I'm just going to go to... You, you're there, but we're not. We can't hear you. Mute. Okay. Here we go. Thank you. I have a question that relates to page 82, parks and open spaces. Am I allowed to go there now or do you want me to wait? No, no. Happy to go there now. Um, urban residents live within 400 metres of a park or open space, and we have a lot of new developments. Are we still actively trying to achieve this objective? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not quite sure how, how, how to answer it. 95% of our urban residents live within 400 metres. Our target is 100%. So in order to achieve 100%, uh, Council will need to proactively um, acquire uh, new parks in some fashion in order to uh, meet this objective. Follow on, please, Mr. Mayor. Yep. Uh, um, yeah, I take your point, Hamish. Definitely, it's ninety-five seems very high, but it is an objective. So we either remove it or stick with ninety-five, or we try and um, and uh, add in when we have developments that they put a park in, or we purchase parks, or we do whatever, or we alter the the goal. It seems foolish to have a goal that we're never going to achieve, or we have no intention of wanting to achieve. I, I, I'm not sure it's that we have no intention. It's just that we haven't quite got there. Um, so it's not saying we don't intend to. It's just that when we measure it for this 12-month period, uh, we, we didn't quite get there. Looking at what we did get there, we probably didn't provide for 5% within 400 metres, but we did provide double what we said we would as in square metres. Instead of 4,000 square metres, is over 8,000 square metres we, we do have a pack, so underachiever on one and overachieve on another. Um, so, Emily, was this rolled over from the LTP or do we just change it or discuss it or how do we get these numbers in there? I believe that these two have stayed the same for the next LTP. But I saw Steve's hand go up, so he might be able to answer. Oh, yeah, Steve. Yeah. Um, me and Neil and Councillor, just, just to give you, um, some background, these two measures come out of Council's open spaces strategy that was adopted a few years ago, and it's on our work program to, to review the open spaces strategy and, um, and, and renew it. So they can be some of, the, some of the guideline measures within that strategy that Council can, can change um, uh, and adopt as such. When's that likely to be reviewed, um, Steve? Uh, that's been done over year one and year two, ready to line up for the next LTP. Great. 
Thank you. Liz? Thank you. I was going to go back to the um, water, drinking water on page 73. So when um, the membrane upgrade comes in next year, that will mean Methven Springfield will tick the boxes for the protozoa treatment as well. Is that correct? Same as Methven? Yeah, that is correct. Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Talking about the playgrounds or open spaces, we've been debating in the past about developers uh, sometimes give us land that they don't want in lieu of payment. Could we have clauses in there that if we have big new development in areas without playgrounds, that we ask them to provide areas that we can build playgrounds or, or open spaces on? Steve? Um, it's through the chair again. Um, what Councillor um, Stewart did highlight is exactly what we, we do do. Our, our um, reserves planner looks at every application to see what existing land we have um, that can be either developed further or what is the need within a, within a subdivision. Um, but yeah, we currently work on that to a great length. Liz? Thank you. Um, Back to transportation, and um, I've been getting a lot of um, feedback regarding the potholes. Um, and I know we spoke about this at the activity briefings the other day, but is there anything we can do um, to get some of these roads sorted that the potholes sort of appearing, it's being filled and then it's back again and sort of a week or two later, and I, and I know it's... Um, we're in unprecedented times with our roads, but um, I heard from our local um, tyre guy here in Methven that he's never seen tyre blowouts like it. Um, and I've had quite a few um, messages from people saying that um, they've ended up with a flat tyre and just really quite worried how dangerous the situation is. So is there anything we can do with this situation? Through the chair, I, I can answer that. Um, we certainly are um, addressing this with, with HEB, the contractors. Uh, clearly, we've, we've got a, a big challenge ahead of us with the amount of uh, moisture in the ground and, and the, the potholes. And um, they are uh, adjusting their resources and putting as much resources as they can into it. Um, you know that we're just doing the best we can with that. It's uh, it's 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 hard to get resources at the moment because they seem to be uh, affecting the whole region and and here by doing whatever they can with their resources. What we are doing is uh, where the teams have been doing um, signs and, and potholes. We're now reducing the, the the amount that they're putting into the the signs to focus more on the potholes in the immediate future. Um, so we we are certainly doing what we can. Um, and we're also looking at, at perhaps modifying some of the mix uh, in, in the potholes. Uh, it is very wet and, and sometimes the mix needs to be slightly different compared with the drier pothole repairs. Um, so our team are working with HEB, um, you know, trying to address this as best we can. Thank, thanks, Neil. But we, we do have a contract with HEB and they just appear to be letting us down a bit at the moment and staffing issues are... Um, staffing issues and a lot of businesses around at the moment are having them and obviously they are, are having them as well so we do sympathize with them a bit but um the roads need to be safe and um yeah what keep the pressure on them to keep it there seems to be potholes to keep filling these potholes and getting them back to where we need to be would be good and the people will certainly appreciate it so thank you for that um any further questions for the end of year performance report? If not, move in a seconder. I'll move the report. Seconder, John. Any further discussion? If not, I'll put the motion on my favour. All in favour, please say aye. Thank you. And I think we have now um, Michael Hooker on Zoom. And we'll go to pay, oh, item 14, page 67.
annual resident survey. Michael, there you go. I see you there now. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I was actually hoping, uh, looking forward actually to presenting um, in person in Ashburton um, this afternoon. Um, we I was actually too. in Omaru last night and I'm now presenting from home at Tauranga. So um, it's already been a pretty eventful day. Thanks very much uh, to, to COVID um, for that. Um, as Neil mentioned, um, my Michael Hooker, I'm the Director of Research at Key Research. Um, and so this is the presentation um, of the of the high level results of the annual residents um, satisfaction survey. So the format of this uh, presentation, um, I'll take you through some of the high level object objectives of the study. Um, we'll look at how we conducted it. Um, then we'll go on to look at uh, some of those high level measures, some of those KPIs. We'll look at um, how we're tracking over time. I'll provide a little bit of additional insight, and then we'll finish um, with the conclusions slide. Right. Thanks. Well, we'll hand over to you if you take us through it. Yeah, sure. So um, essentially what we're looking to do with the survey is, is to measure across all the various um, service attributes that the council provides, how satisfied residents are um, at this point in time. Importantly, uh, we want to get a, a sense of where any angst is lying um, at the moment and also importantly assess um, how each of the attributes are tracking over time and particularly towards uh, long-term measures um, as set down um, in the plan. Uh, so two years ago, um, we shifted the, the study uh, to a paper to online methods. So we provide residents uh, with the opportunity to complete the survey um, either via a uh, hard copy uh, paper questionnaire or via um, an online link. Um, and again, this has proved very successful. So we've got 847 uh, responses to the survey this year. Um, the sample is weighted so that um, we're getting a good representation um, across the demographic uh, profile of the district. We use the electoral roll um, as a sample frame. Um, and two years ago, uh, we took the step also of shifting to quarterly data collection. Um, and this has proved um, invaluable this time around. Um, you'll see that we've basically uh, had four points of data collection essentially through the seasons. Um, and I'll just say, if we had have collected all of the data at just one point in time, um, the significant weather event that happened um, at the end of May there, would have had quite an influence um, upon the result. So uh, so that was a really good move that we made. So collecting data at four points allows us to make sure that um, um, elements don't go unseen at a particular point in time, but I think importantly, um, it allows them not to have an unnecessary effect upon the results. Um, so that helped us in this particular case. Uh, so let's look at some of the, um, the biggest improvements across everything that we measured. Um, and uh, of all the uh, 41 attributes that we measured, um, 21 uh, showed some improvement um, in terms of perception. So that's really good. Only 10 um, showed uh, levels of dissatisfaction. Um, and you'll see here that mayor and councillors have improved significantly from 2020 uh, through to 2021, um, as had the performance of the council staff. So some really good improvements there. Uh, conversely, if we look at the, the other end of the scale, um, we see rubbish and recycling um, has decreased by eight points in terms of its level of uh, satisfaction. Um, and we saw that there was some sort of um, uh, behavioural change happening um, in quarter one, which would have been spring of 2020, uh, which had quite an impact here. Um, but over the following um, three quarters, there has been a steady improvement um, in the level of performance or perception of satisfaction around rubbish and recycling. So it's starting to trend upwards. However, um, it has still ended um, on, a, on a negative note there for the annual roll-up. Uh, so let's look, now look at some of the, the key measures here. So overall performance, um, so been a really good uplift here um, of five points uh, since 2020. So a little bit of a roller coaster happening, um, but the upward swing is very pleasing to see. Let's look at some of the top performing areas. So these are the ones um, which are recording the highest levels of satisfaction. Uh, so we have public uh, libraries uh, there, 98% um, satisfaction rating. So very, very high levels of satisfaction for that. The cemeteries as well, 
Um, importantly, we see there a really high level of satisfaction with emergency management um, and civil defence. Um, and interestingly, this stayed really consistent across each of the four quarters um, as well. And so where there was dissatisfaction with the council's overall performance, um, we asked residents, well, uh, why are you dissatisfied? Um, and we see the uh, perennial chestnut um, popping up here. Uh, so roading issues accounted for 47% um, of all comments to do with dissatisfaction with the council's overall performance. Um, we'll go on to talk a little bit about roading further um, in the in the presentation. You might wonder why if rubbish, why rubbish and recycling was not featuring more prominently in this graph, um, particularly considering um, its level of dissatisfaction uh, decrease. Uh, but uh, we can see that roading is by far the strongest driver of dissatisfaction um, with the council's overall performance. The satisfaction rating with the roading networks are very low compared with rubbish and recycling, for example. So therefore, it is going to be a very strong thing coming through uh, for dissatisfaction overall. So let's have a look at some of the quantitative measures then. Um, but very pleasingly, uh, we see an increase there, uh, particularly for the sealed roading network uh, from last year. Really nice to buck the trend. Uh, you'll see for the sealed roading network, it was on a, um, on a downward trend there. Um, so it spiked up and so has perceptions um, of the unsealed roading network. Um, however, both still uh, sitting um, below the LTP target, the sealed road networks in particular, well below uh, the LTP target there. Um, again, we asked for reasons for dissatisfaction and um, I noticed um, a previous comment there just before I came on from a councillor about the, uh, the, the potholes um, around, uh, around the, the roading network. Um, and so you, you had some really good anecdotal evidence there, but um, this is the, the quantification um, across uh, the residents as well. So uh, the quality and maintenance of the roading network really coming through is something um, which is causing quite a little of dissatisfaction. Uh, rubbish and recycling, um, I mentioned how that had trended downwards, but it started with a uh, behavioural change that went on as a result of something uh, to do with the, uh, the, the COVID um, crisis and the way that it affected uh, people's handling of, of rubbish and that flowed through. But it has been steadily increasing over the last three quarters. Um, and if, if that continues, we should see a nice bounce up um, for this KPI um, over the next 12 months. And these were some of the reasons why uh, residents said they were dissatisfied. So no bins provided for green waste. Um, and household bins provided were too small um, were some of the, the key reasons why they stated they were dissatisfied. Uh, so let's look at the satisfaction with the rate spend um, has stayed reasonably consistent since 2020. Um, do have, however see a little bit of a, a downward trend there for those um, who are non-rate payers. Um, the EA Network Centre continues uh, to return a really good level of satisfaction. Um, again, well above the LTP target as well. So that's a good news story. Um, we asked residents um, what they thought that the Ashburton District Council uh, should be spending more on. Um, unsurprisingly, um, you'll see there uh, a massive number of comments around uh, the roading network. Um, when you look at the other comments that were provided, um, this is quite significant to have 50% um, of, of all responses uh, focused around um, that one particular attribute. Um, this is what they felt that perhaps the council should be spending less on. We ask a number of um, well-being and sentiment questions, and I just wanted to sort of dwell on a couple in here that, that uh, are showing us something quite interesting, but we'll just talk about the ones that have just remained consistent. So we see Ashburton District is a great place to live, has remained consistent, as, as has you clear about what the council does and the services and facilities it offers. Um, new resident support um, has peaked up a little bit, but the two that I wanted to focus on, let's just have a look at the first one here, you're confident that Ashburton District is going in the right direction. So that's a really nice um, increase um, in perceptions there. So that's an eight point increase. And then when we overlay that with you trust council to do the right thing for the district 
and its communities. Um, you'll see how that's following a really similar pattern. Um, and so essentially it's saying to us, we residents feel that they trust the council to do the right thing for the district, then they're confident that the Ashburton district um, is going in the right direction. So that's a nice learning um, and insight for us to have there. We introduced some new measures um, last year. Um, these are returning really good levels um, of agreement or satisfaction. Um, except for the uh, the level of influence over council decision making, um, and that's not unusual to return um, a level of satisfaction. Uh, there, you'll have some residents who believe um, that they should have much more say, and then conversely, you'll have quite a number of residents who think that um, that you folk have been put in, in that position to to do that for them. Um, we just wanted to touch on some uh, significant differences here. Um, again, just to provide a little bit of further insight uh, from the survey itself. So um, urban respondents are those basically from the Ashburton uh, township uh, city area um, and rural uh, everybody outside that, uh, but within the district. Um, and there are some big differences here. Um, for every single attribute except for feeling a sense of community, um, urbanites uh, much more likely to be satisfied than rural folk. Uh, and there are some big differences here. You'll see, uh, particularly around the, the, the roading network, um, rural residents um, are, are much less likely to be satisfied <coughs> with the roading network. They're also much less likely to be satisfied um, with how the rates have been spent and also the, the drinking and water supply. So some really, so really interesting insights to be gained there as well. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to um, finish with some conclusions. Um, so the overall performance measure has improved. Um, so year on year, um, these results are good, uh, particularly perceptions of roads, uh, which have been more favourable compared with 2020. There are significant issues to face there, but in general, it seems to be trending up and we buck the trend, um, as we saw earlier. But performance of the mayor and councillors and the council staff have been rated more positively. So it's, it's a nice thing for us to take away. Um, we've outlined some areas of focus here, um, the roading network, uh, waste management, uh, disparities between um, urban and rural residents. Um, importantly though, we see that residents are confident that the Ashburton district um, is going <coughs> in the right direction. The final point here, um, we could consider how using um, other methodologies that we have in play, that research could be used to provide even better um, levels of understanding and, and insight going forward. Thank, thank you, Michael. It's a really good um, overview of the survey. Um, some really good numbers there, and um, it's certainly pointing towards what we need to do, where we need to focus, and uh, definitely need to focus on um, roading. Uh, is one of them. There's a couple of points there. Um, Waste management and roading is, is one, and there's some great results for uh, councillors and staff and um, the A networks, etc. Too. So, um, if we can stop unsharing the screen, and I can see, I could then see uh, everyone again, and I'm sure there'll be some questions. I've got one hand up to come up there, Liz. Thank you. Um, that, thanks for that presentation. I was just wondering. Who do you class urban and, and who is rural? So if someone lived in the township of Rakaia or Methvin, are they classed urban or rural? Uh, rural. Uh, rural. Rural for the purposes of this year. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Caroline? You'll have to push that uh, button. Yep. yep, got it. Thank you. Um, with regards to when you looked at that list you, you had up earlier for... Mm -hmm the rural and the urban, there was a distinct uh, divide and nothing in the rural list was greater than those in the urban list. So the rural people in general were dissatisfied compar comparatively to the urban people and all attributes that were measured. Well, it appeared to be in that cursory glance. Do, is that, do you do other surveys for other areas? Is that a common theme throughout the country or is that a unique sort of spin for this district? Um, I wouldn't say that it's a unique spin um, for this district. Uh, so we generally will have um, people who live 
um, in towns within the districts which would be similar um, to their Spurden district, um, having a greater appreciation, um, if you like, or a greater awareness of the services and facilities and probably um, anecdotally probably more likely to be um, availing or using those services and facilities as well. Um, I, I just point out that there, there was that there was a significant difference there, where rural folk um, felt that they had a sense of community which was stronger than than urbanites. Yeah, good. The I don't think there was a divide between the urban and rural. They just see it in different lights. The urban is a bit more optimistic, where the rural people are more pessimistic at our services we provide. Not necessarily a divide. Is that right? Are you talking to me? Or well, Michael, Michael, I think. Yeah. Um, I, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't know whether we would could term it uh, a divide. Um, I think from from our point of view, there there are just some significant differences of of opinion there, probably um, more based upon um, awareness and actually using and seeing those services and facilities. Yeah, yeah. I just said divide now as a word. I mean, gap or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Nothing. Sure. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, Michael. Ever since I've been on the council, the same result comes back. And I think it's 24% um, of rural people are satisfied with sealed roads. And when we look at where the rates come from, 70 or 80% of the general rate, 70 or 80% of the roading rate come from rural. And rural people always don't think they're getting value for money. You ask them, where are our rates going? And they say, well, we're paying a he heap of rates, but it never seems to come to light in improving our roads. That's why I think it's so important to keep like a, minor things like gravel on unsealed roads and, and things like that are a small part of our roading expenditure, but they do a hang of a lot towards improvement of what the council's doing. And I think it's exactly who is paying and who's not satisfied with where their money's going. Thank you, Stuart. Diane? Yep. Thank you. My question's um, around the roading. In that 50% figure of the general dissatisfaction around urban and rural roading, is that a typical answer of a district similar to this? Would you get see that in other districts too? Um, yes, yes, we would. Probably not to that extent. But um, I think you need to also look at the at, at the high level of dissatisfaction that um, it, it is so high that it's not unusual that the the verbatim we would call it or the comments or the reason for dissatisfaction would be so heavily weighted towards that particular attribute. It's a, it's a, a, when you look at the number of the other things that we measure, they are much much higher in terms of levels of satisfaction. Michael, just thinking, looking at the roads, um, you have measure the. The people four times a year you ask them how it's going is it different in the summer for the roads to the winter different results um uh, from from memory not necessarily uh that seemed to be reasonably consistent okay good uh, lynette i was just wondering because of this rural and urban can there be a survey actually directed specifically for the Royal to see what they would like, you know, what what is wrong, just to try and capture, you know, what are what could we be doing um, in services or that for them? Because unless we ask in a survey, we will never, we'll never know. Yeah, um, I think we ask that in the when we start the long term plan we ask what people focus on so um yeah perhaps we do already uh any further questions if not kind of a mover for the recommendation that the council receives the 2021 annual resident survey report lynette carolyn uh the speakers to the motion or against for or against no i'll put the motion all in favor please say aye Against carried. Thank you, Michael, for your report and um, very well done. It was um, a good, good report. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, item next is number 16 District Promotion, page 89.
And Simon, this is your report. Let's keep coming on. Thank you. Anything, oh, yeah. further, anything further to add? No, I don't have anything to add, so happy to take questions. And sorry, my video seems to have been stopped. So. That's all right. We know what you look like. We can hear you though well, which is good. Questions, councillors? Um, I just had one, one of the deliverables. Um, we talk about increasing the number of domestic visitors to the Ashburton district. What is a domestic, what do you class as a domestic visitor? What do they have to be to be domestic? So somebody from New Zealand. Um, so not, not coming from offshore. Yeah, do they have to be uh, a travelling salesman or someone on holiday or does it not matter? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It could be any of those, but, but typically it's people coming for trips. Um, but business tourism and um, is, a, is an equally valid um, thing that we're looking to try and capture. Okay, thanks. Got questions in there, Liz? Thank you. Um, thanks, Simon. Just wondering about the vehicle. So that's um, in addition to... So that doesn't come out of the 195000 Is that correct? Uh, no, the vehicle's already expensed, I believe. So but the running costs of the vehicle <clears throat> will will come out of of the expenditure that we're giving to Christchurch NZ. So which is about four thousand dollars a year, I believe. Just just to clarify, um, uh, councillor, when the change was made from EMC to Christchurch, New Zealand. Uh, that involved a vehicle for the Mid Canterbury Marketing Manager, and so it's a continuation of the um, access to that vehicle. Uh, and as Simon says, the only cost to the budget line is the running costs of that vehicle. Okay, so if EMC still had some money in their pot, could that be access to pay for the vehicle? Okay. It could. We're, we're, I understand that finance is still working through the final audits on the EMC close down. So we're, we're unsure at the moment whether there's going to be monies left or whether there's going to be more audit fees incurred in that close down. Okay, thank you. John? Yeah, following on the same thing from the car. So we are providing a car to the employee, or are we? providing the car to Christchurch, New Zealand? So the, the car is going to Christchurch, New Zealand um, for the use of tourism activity in the district. So normally a car would be provided under an individual employment contract and therefore would incur uh, FBT as far as the ADC is concerned. By doing it the way you're doing it, we are not incurring the cost of FBT in providing that car because we're providing the car to Christchurch New Zealand who are then giving it for the use of the employee. Yes, we, we can't provide a fringe benefit to someone else's employee. So regardless of... Um, the status of the car, this council can't be liable for FBT on someone else's employee. So, yeah, it's not us. Yeah. Yep, thank you. Uh, Caroline. You have to go to that unmute button. We have a problem because when I'm in Stella and push the unmute button, you have to be in Zoom to push the unmute button, you know, if you push your space bar, so you can't work between them. But in Stella, in the last thing, when we looked at the economic, um, I'm just going back. We lost you again, Caroline. When you look at end of year performance report for economic development, a couple of measures are not able to be measured. One was nights of accommodation in Ashburton was not able to be measured. So when we're looking at the measurement now for um, this uh, the contract, it does have domestic tourism. How is this a measurable um, figure? Is this possible to be measured or are we just not going to get any sensible analysis? Uh, 
<clears throat> yeah, there's, there's two figures that we're going to measure. So there's the there's the <clears throat> the the market share, which is essentially visitor nights, um, and then there's uh, a proportion or an increase in the proportion of what people pay while they're in the district. So um, if, if, by way of an example, if, if historically they were spending $100 during a visit, we're looking for a proportional gain on that $100 um, as part of this contract. So more people staying and spending more while they're here are the two, two headline KPIs that we're looking at. Can I ask an additional question, please, Mayor? Yes, go for it. Um, Simon, when or through the chair, when I read the economic development report that we've just had, it says that we're not able to measure visitor nights. I may well have misunderstood it, and I probably have. I can't go back to that page though and continue speaking because once I change the view, I have to be looking at Zoom to talk. Um, yeah, my understanding is we can we we can measure visitor nights. Um, but I I will double check that for you, Caroline. I, I can I can see the, the 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 confusion. So, well, it's not a matter of confusion. If you read the words, I'll, uh, yeah. it says unable to measure visitor nights. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, we, we, we take, we take eighty-one of one hundred eighteen. So just as long as we can do it, there's no point doing something if we're setting ourselves up for failure before we even begin. Yeah, I, I think Simon used the word confusion to describe the inconsistency. So we will um, apply our mind to that consistency and do it properly. Yep. Yep. Stuart? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. My question is, why are we supplying a car for somebody who doesn't live in our district? We Are we supplying a car for him to travel in and out to work? Um, so... Uh, it's a it's a historical um, so so it was it, when the when Enterprise Mid Canterbury uh, sorry Experience Mid Canterbury signed the first agreement the car went with, as part of that agreement um, we did look at exiting from the car the provision of the car and we were supplied with some information to show us the increased costs if we didn't um, leave the car in the contract. Um, and it was quite a significant amount of money that would be needed to service the contract um, if we used higher cars and um, paid um, paid mileage. So the car is is the the most cost effective option for us to consider, even though the person delivering the contract sits outside of the region at the moment. Thank you. Any further questions, uh, Diane? Thank you. That just raises a question in my mind. When it comes time to upgrade that car, who's going to pay for it? Yeah. So the car, the car um, has is um, in for the first year, and then we will review with Christchurch NZ the um, the the KPIs for years two and three, um, and at that point we'll be able to make a, a determination about whether the car is actually needed or not. So can I just ask a further question? So who actually owns the car at the moment? Is it still ADC? Uh, Hamish, can you? Uh, I, I can. Oh, Steve. Um, thank you, uh, me and Neil. Just to clarify the ownership of the car, it sits with ADC. It's a, I wouldn't say an end of a, it was one of our fleet vehicles that was getting um, due to be replaced. So the, the car still stays with our ownership. And as Simon said, once we review year two and year three to see whether the, the car is still needed for um, Christchurch NZ to deliver our services, what we can determine then. But it, it, um, we're not providing a brand new motor vehicle. It tend to be one of our fleet vehicles that's up for replacement. Um, and, and the vehicle is not assigned to a staff member. It's assigned to Christchurch NZ to deliver those services that are in the contract. <coughs> Good. Okay. Any further questions? If um, someone would like to move a recommendation, Lane and Lynette. 
recommendation is written there. Uh, Lane, need to speak to it or not? No. Any further discussion? I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All those in favour, please say aye. Against? Carried. Thank you. Item number 17, page 107. And the naming of road 37 Pudding Hill Road, Methan. And Ian, do we have you back? <coughs> yes, I'm here. Uh, right. And anything further to add, Ian, to the report? Um, no, nothing further to add, just to mention that um, in the next council, we've got another four naming reports coming. Okay. Angus? Uh, I'll move. Um, I think the name's the most appropriate Westwood way for that area. Yep, and Liz seconded. Yeah, I'll second. No further discussion. I'll put the motion on my favour. All in favour, please say aye. Carried. Thank you. 17, 18. Uh, item number 18, page 111. Replacement of public conveniences from the Tourism Infrastructure Fund. And uh, Ian, is it? We have, yeah. Ian Soper, welcome. Uh, questions or anything further to add, Ian, to the report you've got? No, thank you, Your Worship. I think the report covers it off. I'm happy to take questions. Councillors, questions? Yeah, I just had one question. We budgeted for doing these toilets in a long-term plan, and now we've got the money, and it's a co-funding. If um, now we have the money from the co-funding, we're making the toilets bigger and brighter than what we would have done before. Would that be correct or not? Um, yes, Your Worship, that is quite correct. They are dry vault toilets, so that does mean that they're very um, environmentally friendly. And uh, there will be landscaping, car parking, and the uh, additional items around those sites uh, uh, in, in conjunction with the actual replacement units. So it'll be a, a higher level of service, certainly, than what we would have been able to provide had we not been able to uh, get the uh, additional TIF funding from the government. The TIF funding has to be, got to be co-funding? Uh, that is correct, Your Worship, it does. Okay. So we couldn't go back to the model we had in a long-term plan and not use our money but use theirs? You couldn't do that? Uh, no, that's correct. You cannot. Right. So the entire project cost is uh, is 368 uh, uh, overall. Yep. Questions, councillors? Uh, Stuart. Thanks, Mr Mayor. The... LR Rata Reserve, does it justify a twin pan? A lot of those places, just a single pan is perfectly okay. Yes, through the chair, the, uh, the LR Rata often gets buses and visitor numbers um, uh, offer qu quite a, a large amount at, the, at one time. So definitely a, um, a multiple facility is, um, is deemed to be required on that site. Annette? You'll have to unmute yourself. I mean, I'd like to move this, but I'd have to say um, Ararata Reserve, um, there is a lot of people that use this reserve in the toilets and are, are really desperate up there. But we want to know, will this be the start of um, a revamp of that reserve up there? because it is widely used by people of the district and outside. Uh, through the chair, this was obviously one step in, in lifting the level of service, um, and we'll see how that progresses. But at this stage, uh, this is just a, an individual project for that, uh, for that site. Mm. So this project would have been in the, is it the open, open spaces strategy? It would have been in that, is it? Or? Um, through the chair, yes, I believe it is. Yep. Uh, Liz, uh, we had a mover. Liz, you wanted to second? Yeah, I wanted to second, and, and I agree. I think 
especially our our rata is in desperate need of um of some new toilets and I'm pleased it's going to include some um planting and car parking as well. Yeah, Roger speaking to the motion or against um I just wanted a clarification if I could um it says here to bring forward the $172,000 of capital expenditure to enable the council to uplift the further contribution from the tourism infrastructure. <coughs> Are we saying that if we don't bring that expenditure forward, we can't pick up the um, tourism infrastructure fund? Is that, am I reading that correctly? Through the chair, yes, that's correct. Thank you. Uh, Angus? Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, you said a very key word in my mind um, some sentences ago, co-funded. Uh, this is a classic of where the people from outside the district can contribute for their good. We have one on roads. Um, we have this one here on tourism. They obviously want better service to people outside, so they're willing to come and help us to provide something better than what we could afford to build. If only, Mr Mayor, the government could see their way forward for co-funding in three waters, this district would be a much happier place. Thank you. Diane? Thank you, and I support this too. I've been up there in the spring when the roadies are out and people everywhere, and then you have small bus arrives in, so, of course, they all want the toilet, so I totally support what we're achieving here. I'm not quite sure how you deal with funding when you bring it forward, but... Um, Happy to support the motion. Uh, was loan funded, so there'll be slight increase in interest covering it in years two and one and two where it wasn't before. Yep, and, um, and they probably won't be built to the end of this year anyway, so um, it'd be more of an effect in year two. Uh, any further speakers for or against the motion? If not, um, Lynette, you need to write a reply. No, I'm fine. I'm just I'm just happy that it's going to go ahead. Okay. Well, we'll decide in a few seconds whether it goes ahead. We'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All those in favour, please say aye. Against. Carried. Thank you. Next item: financial variance report. <coughs> And uh, Paul, are you here for this one? Is it? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm here, and also um, Aaron might be on the line as well. Okay, great. Councillors, hopefully we can do this just by going through page by page. Um, this is the 30th of June, which is our final um, report for the year, but there still will be still some adjustments to um, have to the report Report as it heads into an annual report. Um, so, any questions? Page. I have a report in front of me, and it doesn't have page numbers on it. So, I'll do um, the page after the last one, and then we're moving on to the next one. If there's any headlines in there, if you have marked any headlines in your report if you could um, just highlight them. Mr Mayor, just to perhaps help, the, the page that starts income and expenditure overview, that is page three of the report. Okay. So if we, if we start from thinking of that <laughs> overview as page three, uh, then it will perhaps flow from there. Okay. Well, I've got, I can renumber it numbers ago. So this page three is the income and overview. Page four, income and expenditure. Paul, your hand up. Mr Mayor, just to let you know that this is only a preliminary report, so it doesn't have the final accruals for June in, so the expenditure is likely to increase um, as it only has 11 months of expenditure. The 12, the June accruals um, have only just gone in the last couple of days. Um, so that'll be the key difference between this report and a final June report, which will give you another June report um, at a later date, at the same time as we give you the July report for the new financial year. Well, when do you think that report will be due? Is it two weeks, next council meeting? 
um, it depends how accurate you want it. Um, the accruals are in there. Um, we have yet to go through the capital expenditure and, and look for anything that needs to be expensed. So in reality, I think you'd be four weeks before you got something that was meaningful. And even then, it won't have the final year-end um, adjustments. But it'll be, it would be a lot... In four weeks, it'll be a lot more meaningful than this one. Okay. So to help speed things up here, then, if, instead of going through page by page, councillors, if you see something you... Um, have a burning desire to talk about in the report. If you could just highlight it, you will have highlighted it um, earlier when you read it. And if there is nothing there that you want to highlight, we'll take the report as um, as read. And there'll be another report coming as it becomes more accurate as um, the figures are being um, formulated. So, yeah, John. Yeah, um, just to comment a couple of questions. Comment is, when you look at our balance sheet on page 34, it is looking extremely healthy. No question about that. The other one is on work in progress there, which is under our, on the asset side of the ledger, our work in progress is something like $51 million. I would presume... By the time we get the final report, there will be very little in work in progress, and most of that will have been moved to either fixed assets or infrastructural um, assets. Is that correct? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor, that is correct. Um, most of it will move out. There will still be some um, balance left in there. For example, the new um, library civic centre will be sitting in there, and any other assets that are still um, partway through being... Um, completed but we generally put everything into work in progress during the year and then capitalize it out at the end of the year and that work hasn't been done yet my yeah. second oh, question yeah, sorry carry on, John. my second question relates to we've borrowed about 70 odd million dollars yet as at the end of may we had 33 million dollars sitting in the bank at the end of June, we've got $24.66 in the bank. The question I have is, are we sort of borrowing too early um, and having the money sitting around doing nothing? Meanwhile, we're paying interest on those borrowings. Uh, so, Mr Mayor, the balance in cash is fairly temporary. Um, there's little difference between investing and, and borrowing at the moment. In fact, um, our investment rate is virtually nothing. So um, it's not really sitting there not earning any income. Um, that will dwindle in the short period of the new financial year as the building, new library civic centre. Um, that money um, will be going towards that project after the um, 20 million funding is going from central government is going there as well. So yes, there is a higher cash balance than we'd normally have um, at this stage. Sorry, I was just going to, um, I, I recall over the last 12 months, we've also adopted a strategy of minimizing the internal loans um, for external debt. Uh, and that I, I assume that that um, change balance that Councillor Falloon refers to is also part of that change would that be correct uh, sorry, Mr. Mayor, that's exactly right we've converted all um of our internal debt to external debt and so that has uh, given rise to the cash yep. sure thanks mr mayor i'm not sure which page if it's on transportation um i see am i correct in saying that the subsidy of 1.7 million not um used and a loan of 2.267 that we didn't draw we've just been told huge dissatisfaction with our roading did we pass we were going to use that loan on roading and then we didn't turn around and use it why is that through mr mayor part of that or maybe the significant part of that is the um town center upgrade um which has not been drawn yet so some of that loan money um and subsidy is earmarked for the town centre upgrade, which was running behind the original time. Ryan, you're there too. Did you want to add anything? You just come on. 
no, nothing to add to that other than um, <clears throat> the subsidy. We will be uh, trying to get that money carried forward, and our indications to date is that it will be, but we haven't got confirmation of that at this stage. Thank you. Stuart? Yes, um, as well as that, <clears throat> I, I've advocated consistently that just because we're not using it on the CBD, if that subsidy was available, we could have used it under general roading and then pay back to the CBD in the next financial year. It seems an awful shame to have a subsidy there and we haven't used it. With the prospect of possibly losing it, that would absolutely be uh, terrible. Yeah. Take that um, point on board, Stuart. Yep. Um, so I'd like to move that we receive the Financial uh, yeah. recommendation that we put, uh, receive the financial report. Move and a seconder. John and Caroline. Um, I'll put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Carried. Thank you. Uh, item number 20, Mayor's report. On page 116. Uh, obviously, that. Bulk of it there was the conference reported a bit on that last meeting. Um, there's a wee link on the um, LGNZ where his website, all the presentations that were had, you can look at them all there. Um, some of them are very interesting, more some more so than others. If you want to, go on the LGNZ website and you'll get the presentations which last for about half an hour if you wanted to do that. Uh, any other questions? Um, I'll just add one item, which was um, August the 14th, I think it was, or 15th, um, went to the Fonterra politicians rugby match in Ashburn. Very good day, raised 120 odd thousand dollars, which was um, which was good. Um, just add one, ask one other thing. Um, talking this morning about we've got COVID here now and um, inquiring about um, getting our wastewater tested to um, see if our wastewater has any COVID in it and it'll give an indication to the community as to um, it is or not. Um, Hamish, have you got an update on that or someone? Um, I think I asked the question of this morning, Neil, yeah. as to whether we can do it, who does it, that sort of thing. Yeah, we started, uh, thank you, Mr Mayor, we've started exploring that, um, what what might be involved, certainly through the Ministry of Health, but either Neil or Andy uh, might have gained some further uh, information during the course of um, this morning. Thanks. Andy? Yeah, so I've made some tentative first inquiries. Um, the uh, What I've uh, gleaned so far is that um, there's about 27 locations being tested, uh, wastewater is being tested for COVID around the country. But the majority of, well, as far as I'm aware, all of that is being done under the auspices of the health, uh, Ministry of Health. Um, it's not clear to me at this point as whether or not it's actually available um, by you know, council request. Um, they may be uh, reserving the resources purely for the Ministry of Health. So I've put a request through to ESR to confirm that. Uh, this morning. I um, haven't got a reply back yet. Um, and I'm also chasing it up with one of the local um, asset manage, manage, managers, LiftServe, uh, on local government online, um, just to find out whether or not other councils have been uh, exploring it as well. Uh, I can certainly update you once I get some re uh, information back on that. That'd be great just to keep us updated as to if we can do it, because it'll certainly tell us whether it's in the community or not. And with the way people move around, we um, um, it would be nice to know, I think. Thanks for the... And you'll update it as soon as you can. That'd be great. Stuart. Yep. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Just looking at the remits and the percentage passed, I know remits have to go past the Local Government New Zealand Board, don't they, to be accepted. Do they have any debate or is it just a case of rubber stamping? By the look of those um, the support, them are, what's the sense of bringing them if there's absolutely no no opposition or no debate? Uh, they're certainly debated at the um, at the local government conference. The speakers get one minute or two minutes to talk for or against. They get three speakers, four, three against if they get that many, and generally they do 
and then it goes to the vote. So yeah, there is debate. And through you, Mr. Mayor, most of those or many of the remits um, proposed to advocate for regulatory change from from you know government legislation or government regulation. So the mere fact that something is passed overwhelmingly by the conference doesn't automatically um, make it so for communities around New Zealand because it usually then means uh, that the, the local government New Zealand uh, then has to advocate for change uh, from central government. So um, you can see the support for it, but it doesn't mean there's an imminent change uh, to the you know the law of the land. Yeah. Thanks so much. Uh, nothing further. I'll. Um motion that we receive the mayor's report i'll move the second it liz all those in favor please say aye. against carried thank you next item number 21 um is the deputy mayor's report any questions of liz been very busy getting out and about doing lots of great work as you all are If not, no, can I have a mover that we recommendation that we receive the councillor's report? Liz and John. Put the motion all in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. The so next item is number 22, rates, penalties, 21-22, uh, instalment one and annual penalty. That was um, devised this morning. Um, because of uh, us going to level four and people having trouble who will be paying their rates. We normally come into the building to do it. They can't do it because the um, building is closed. So, Angus. I move. Uh, Angus moved. In, uh, yeah. Second up, Liz. I'm happy to second, but I did have a quick question. Okay, it's open debate now. Questions go. Yeah. Um, so that's that's. Uh, I heard you on the radio this morning saying that if people couldn't come into the um, office to pay, then um, we might look at doing something like this. And I was really pleased to see see this come in. So that's a blanket approach. It's not just people who don't pay via internet um, banking, is it? I think it's a blanket approach, but it um, probably captures those people who would normally come into the office and swipe their card in there who can't do it, but it probably captures others as well if they didn't want to. But Hamish, you or Paul? Perhaps I can st start, yeah. Paul, Mike, um, like, like to finish off. Of course, we can't, um, we can't know how people intended to pay. So in the end, uh, what we're really um, doing is encouraging people to pay online. Uh, and it's another opportunity to um, strengthen that um, that methodology um, of payment because it's efficient and it, it doesn't um, it doesn't get affected by things like lockdown. So we we do urge uh, people to pay um, online if they can. But for those who can't, uh, then this um, leeway is is for council's consideration. But of course. Uh, it has to be for all that don't pay because we can't tell whether or not they were intending to come in or whether they they weren't. So uh, it, it has to be a, a more blanket approach. But we, we're hoping that those who can will pay online. Okay, thank you. Angus? Oh, just speaking for the motion, um, yeah. Hamish covered some of it. I think it's a good idea for the circumstances that we're in and it also tells people that... Um, we are understanding the circumstances that the Prime Minister's put them in and have sympathy with them, and we, we still want their rate money. We will still get it, but we give them a wee bit of leeway on the penalty. Thank you. Carolyn, your question, or you're happy now? I was doing thumbs up. Okay, good. Happy. That's great. Um, any further debate? If not, I'll put the motion. I'm in favour. All in favour, please say aye. Against carried, thank you. If we could um, move on to item number 23, which is just a CEO's um, verbal update, um, mainly because of COVID. Thanks, Hamish. Uh, thanks, um, Mr. Mayor. And uh, yes, I'm very I'm happy to be able to just to give a brief um, overview of where the council services are at 
um, under the under the lockdown, uh, and particularly to uh, focus on those things that are essential services and that remain um, uh, functioning. So our drinking water, stormwater, stock water, and wastewater services continue to be delivered as essential services. Uh, our roading maintenance is. Um, uh, is, is impacted for uh, general maintenance, but where there is a, a road safety issue, uh, then we continue with that. Uh, we will continue to pick up both red and yellow rubbish bins for those who um, uh, have that service. Unfortunately, we can't pick up glass at level four, so we ask people just to uh, put that aside for now. Uh, and the resource recovery parks um, uh, are closed. Our regulatory services, particularly thinking about building consents uh, and um, resource consents, uh, our staff are working from home on the, that, um, those consenting processes, uh, so that should continue. Um, however, we can't offer physical inspections um, of um, building work uh, under, under level uh, four. Uh, we have just dealt with the rates instalment and the, uh, the penalty issue, so that's great. Um, public toilets on the main freight routes remain open. They are subject to um, increased uh, cleaning. Um, but th those public toilets that aren't on the main freight route um, have been uh, closed. Uh, our public facing um, facilities are closed. So the A Network Centre, uh, the Library, Art Gallery, Museum, Community Halls, Playgrounds and our main administration building um, are all closed. Our staff, however, are working from home wherever possible. Uh, we do know that our um, uh, community contacting the council via our customer services team that was busy this morning. A lot of inquiries, um, as we perhaps pr predicted last night, was around the rates um, instalment and how people might be able to pay. So it's good to have been able to deal with that so um, uh, so promptly. Uh, but our, our team is still um, answering calls and, and emails. So those members of the community that need to check something with us um, should still be able to get a, um, a quick and accurate answer. Uh, so those are the, the main um, services, of course, this council meeting has um, reverted to Zoom. They're still being live streamed, so if, if um, members of the community that might normally have perhaps caught up with the proceedings of a meeting via uh, YouTube or Facebook, uh, then um, they would still be able to do so. Uh, we, we do talk about um, information on our website, so all this information is on council's website. Uh, and like we did, um, Mr. Mayor, through the lockdown uh, last year, um, we, we always emphasise the one source of source of truth around COVID, and that's the Ministry of Health website um, that contains the information uh, from the government and encourage people to continue to access uh, information around COVID from that uh, that official site. Uh, and I guess I could just finish this brief summary, uh, Mr. Mayor, by all the normal messages around um, COVID and hygiene and staying safe and keeping our distance and um, uh, uh, operating a really good um, hygiene. Can I just in finishing um, thank the staff of the Ashburton District Council uh, who yesterday responded um, you know, very, very well and very quickly uh, to the announcement at, at um, about quarter past six uh, to have all those services uh, in place um, and knowledge of that on websites and via um, uh, messaging uh, so that we could be fully functional um, when people woke up this morning. So it was a pretty it was a pretty good effort. I was really proud of everyone. Yeah, you did you had a um, did a great job and um, uh, with a, in a short amount of time um, and got um, all obviously they've got laptops which they can take home and Wi-Fi and what have you connecting. So it's uh, really good. Questions for Hamish and John. <clears throat> yeah, question is, why can't we take glass? Is it resource um, hungry or what is the issue? It's primarily around the um, intensive handling of it. Uh, so in a, in a uh, pandemic situation, it's best just to put that to one side um, until we have more uh, time and capability to deal with it. And um, also our website, Hamish, I've been on that this morning, had a lot of good information there. And there's also links to the um, COVID website yep. and a couple of other places which you can link to if you didn't want to find the address, it's linked to ours, so it's good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and Angus. 
Oh, Mr. Mayor, um, if I can congratulate the Chief Executive on his report. I think it's wonderful the way in which he's reported. It's always a similar issue nearly every council meeting that's somewhere around the district. Um, and if we could have further reports like this in the future, I think it would be terrific. Not only for us, but for the constituents. Thank, thank you, Angus, for that. And um, well done, Hamish. Thanks for your report. Councillors, any further questions? No? Um, I'll move that we receive the Chief Executive's report, the seconder. Caroline, all those in favour, please say aye. Against, carried. Thank you. So that takes us to the end of the open part of business. So have a move that we move into committee. Caroline and Lynette, all those in favour, please say aye. And thank you for at home who are listening in. Um, we'll update you when we have more information um, comes to hand as to what's happening out there and keep you informed, no doubt. So um, thank you. Uh, we've just moved into committee now, so I think we'll...